Well, hey everyone, it is Kevin here at Walton Church Life. Hey, thanks so much for connecting with us right now. Really a joy to do life together over the next few minutes. That's one of the things that we believe is so valuable is community. We believe it's important for us to do life as one, so thanks for joining with us. Second ideal that we think is valuable is acceptance. Wherever you are at in life, wherever you have been in life, whatever your thoughts about God, uh, we hope you feel right at home here at Walton Church Live. If you have a question about what we believe about who we are, drop us an email. You can send that to waltoncc at fuse.net. And the third ideal is purpose. We have this purpose, I do believe, this energy that we have the availability of in our lives through the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is trying to take us, trying to grow us, trying to mature us, trying to develop us into new territory, into the territory called the kingdom of God. As I like to phrase it out, new hopes, new dreams, new possibilities, new opportunities. So thanks again for being a part of who we are. This is all part of the ministry of Walton Christian Church Disciples of Christ, 50 South Main Street in Walton, Kentucky. Our website is waltonchurch.com. Check us out. And if you would, give us a big thumbs up, a like for the video, and also subscribe to our channel. That would be absolutely phenomenal. Well, uh, I had a friend of mine who said that she was a church nerd here recently. I was uh, at a deal, and she, she was talking about being a church nerd. And so I'm going to get a little nerdy on you right now over the next few minutes talking about the seasons of the church year. And the reason why it's relevant to our conversation today is because we're actually at the end of the church year right now. The present church year, the prior church year, 2023 church year is quickly coming to an end. In fact, it's coming to an end as we have this discussion. And next week we'll begin a brand new church season, a church year called Advent. Advent 2023 that will lead us into to the new year of 2024. But I just want to go through the progression of what a church year looks like. It begins with this, a season called Advent, which is a, a time waiting, anticipating, preparing ourselves for the birth of Christ. And that yields to Christmas Day itself. Jesus Christ, we recognize and we celebrate the birth of Christ. And soon after that is a day called Epiphany. Epiphany is revelation, manifestation, the three wise men, the three magi, the three astronomers, whatever you want to call them. They, they come visit Jesus and they see that he is the one. And so the, they, they reveal to them that he is the one, the day of uh, Epiphany. And then after that, we meander into some uh, season called Lent. And Lent is a time of us to center our thoughts around Jesus Christ and our around things of the holy and to pray. And that prepares us for the passion of Christ, which is Jesus coming into Jerusalem for the last time and then going through the week of uh, being tried and arrested and then uh, going to the cross and being crucified on Good Friday. And that leads us into a day called Easter. Easter, which is a great day of resurrection. It's always the greatest day in the church year is Easter. And next year, 2024, it's actually a little bit early this year. It's actually at the end of March. And so we celebrate the resurrection of Christ's new life that God provides for him as, he lifted, as he's lifted up out of the grave. And then that leads into a season of a few weeks as Jesus, the resurrected Christ, appears to various folk. We read that in scripture. And then he ascends up into heaven. And before he ascends up into heaven, he says that the gift of the Holy Spirit will come into our lives. And sure enough, that happens on the great day of Pentecost. Uh, we, we read the scripture out of Acts chapter 2 in which there's fire and there's wind and people are talking in different languages and there's a bunch of chaos and it's actually the gift of the Holy Spirit coming into our lives. And we believe this gift of the Holy Spirit really propels us into new space. And so we give thanks for that. And then the, the church here just kind of meanders around as we talk about the life of Christ trying to mature into who he is and where he's trying to lead us in our lives. And that all leads us down to this uh, time right now called Christ the King. So the church year ends with Christ the King. And uh, that's, that's enough of the church nerd stuff, just talking about the progression of the church season and the church year. But today, this Christ the King needs to be recognized because it's a day that we really need to ponder, especially the scripture that's prescribed for this day, for this Christ the King season of this church year. 
And this is the, the passage that comes out of Matthew 25. And perhaps you've heard this passage before. It's a very, uh, it's not a warm, fuzzy passage at all. It's a very serious, it's filled with commitment and responsibility. And so uh, just be open and, and receptive to the word. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are, who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I, I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, Lord, when do we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When do we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, and to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. And then they will reply, Lord, Lord, when do we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. That's a serious word from the Lord. The parable that Jesus lifts up as he talks about the king comes and the separation of the goats and the sheep and about seeing God, about seeing Christ, about seeing the holy and the folks around us. Not to ignore the people around us, but to see God, to see the face of God in their lives as we interact with the world in which we live. I have a, a saying that has come to me, a name of a program actually that I sat through a workshop on recently called Seeing the Face of God. And the whole premise is that so often we fail to see the face of God or to even think that the face of God could be in someone else or the image of God, the imago Dei, to use a big fancy term, which means God's image in their life. So often we see uh, and ignore. We see other things in other people and we ignore the face of God. And this, this workshop was trying to at least get the folks who were participating to be open and receptive to the people that you meet, even the people that you find less desirable than what you might like to be around, those folks that you find yourself in contact with to actually be able to be open and receptive of seeing the face of God and them, the Imago Dei, and them as, uh, as Christ sees us through the image of God. And so think about that. As we gear into Advent 2023, so we look forward to the new year 2024. And uh, maybe have a word of prayer about that. God, we uh, are so thankful that you are present with us. And we give you so, th so much thanks that Christ is King. And that he came, that he lived, that he died upon a cross for us. And that he was resurrected through your power to new life. And so help us to see the image of the holy in the world and the folks that we come in contact with. Help us to reach out and to be present and to be available and to be active and open into serving others as we live our days here on this earth. 
We glorify you. We praise you. We worship you. We lift all this up in the precious holy name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Over the past few weeks, we've been in a series of messages talking about who we are and about what we do here at Walton Church Live, Walton Christian Church. One week, we talked about connecting with God daily. One week, we talked about living generously. One uh, week, last week, we talked about serving others. And today, we're going to finish up by talking about baptism because we believe baptism is a significant deal. It's a, it's a big deal as we venture into the new territory that the Holy Spirit's trying to draw us into. And so I preface all this by saying, if you haven't been baptized, uh, be open and receptive to the words that I lift up, to the scripture that we're going to read together, and to the prompting of the Holy in your life. If you have been baptized, then be uh, reconnected, recommitted to what baptism is and where the Holy in your life is trying to lead you. And so I'll just begin by a point of saying Jesus himself was baptized when he was here on earth. We believe that it's important for us to be in the footprints of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptizer in the River Jordan. All four Gospels have an account of Jesus being baptized. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We believe is around 29, 30 years of age when he was baptized. And it was a, it was a way for Jesus Christ to be recognized and to pronounce into the world that he was ready to begin, uh, committed and responsible to the call of God upon his life. And so that began his active ministry upon this earth the next three or four years before he goes to the cross and before he's resurrected up out of the grave. Uh, this begins that time period in his life. And so this word, the, probably the simplest description of Jesus' baptism out of the four Gospels comes out of Mark. And the word says, One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Now, you think about it, Jesus had some highlights in his, you know, watching a sports highlight reel, all the great plays that somebody has made. Well, Jesus had some great highlights in his ministry here on earth. But perhaps one of the greatest days in his life, personally and emotionally and spiritually, was this day of baptism. As he heard this voice from heaven, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. That would have to bring him an anointing of the holy and a joy in his life as he felt that affirmation from his father, from God, from the holy. And so baptism is a way for us to feel the affirmation of God, of the Holy, of Jesus Christ in our life. Also, a way for us to feel the affirmation of the community of faith that we step into by and through and via our baptism. And as we go through baptism in the water, we receive this uh, divineness, this openness, this opportunity in our lives to venture into new space. And so, we are baptized, we follow in that direction, because Jesus himself was baptized. Second point that I want to lift up is it's a, a moment of commitment, a moment of responsibility, a moment of getting serious in one's walk with the Holy. Not that we have it all together at that point because we're still sinners after we go through the water of baptism. And if you expect baptism to instantly change your life, you've got some issues, some problems going on, it's probably not going to happen. As you go into baptism, you probably, as you come up out of the water of baptism, you're going to have similar problems or the same problems as you had before you went into the water. But, but hopefully, hopefully, you have this connection with God, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, that gives you a power that you didn't have before to make it through those challenges that you have in your life. I know that's been the case in my own life. So sometimes when I get into a hard place, I remember the baptism that I have. I remember the power, the energy of the Holy Spirit. I remember that I'm affirmed and accepted by God himself, even though I'm, I'm flawed. I always think about Colossians 1.22. You know, through Jesus Christ, God sees us uh, without flaw, without blemish, without fault. And so that gives me a power to make it through and to um, grow in the new territory as um, I move in the new space. These scripture verses, uh, 1 Corinthians, the human body has many parts, 
but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we've all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. So we're in community with each other. The power that we have together is so much better and so greater than the power that we try to have individually. Out of Colossians chapter 2, the writer says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Out of Galatians, this word, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. There's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. So God makes a covenant with us as we go through baptism, as we put on new clothes in Christ, as we become new creations. And out of Matthew 28, the last two verses out of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And this verse out of 2 Corinthians. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. You're led into new territory through the power, or you have that opportunity, whether or not you want to accept that, that, that opportunity and move and develop that opportunity is up to you. Even, you might be baptized, but it's still not forced upon you. You have that unlocking in the whole, you have that potential in your life that you didn't have before. It's still up to you to move in the new space, to move in the new territory, to rethink the way that you think. So that you see the whole world from a different vantage point. As the writer Paul says in the book of Romans, And so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Baptism gives us a new beginning, a new possibility, a new opportunity. I'm forgiven. I do this because he rose. I know no water can change me, but this water is a sign that change has occurred in my heart. My life will never be the same. So now I'm proclaiming it to the world. And just as Jesus was buried, I will be buried. Just as Jesus rose, I will rise. Faith, hope, love, none are greater than these. I have faith that Jesus is who he says he is. I have hope in his resurrection and his everlasting power. His endless love has forever changed my life.
As we gather together, it's important for us to be focused on Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that we do that is as we gather together, we gather around his table and we give thanks for his life, we give thanks for his death, we give thanks for his resurrection. We believe that Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed before he goes to the cross, he had a last supper with his disciples. And as they sat eating, he took some bread and he gave thanks for the bread. And he gave it to each of his disciples and he said, take eat all of you, this is my body broken for you as often as you do this, you do this in memory of me. And in like fashion, as supper is ending, Jesus, he took a cup and he gave thanks for the cup and he gave it to each of his disciples and he said, take drink all of you, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the remission of your sins as often as you do this, you do this in memory of me. So I would invite you to join with us, maybe have some bread, some cracker nearby, some juice nearby, and as we lift up a word of prayer, give thanks, and then we'll partake together as one. So God, we give you thanks for who you are, for the way that you show up in our lives. Give you thanks for Jesus Christ, and give thanks for this moment at hand. Help draw us closer into you, help draw us closer into each other as we experience you, as we celebrate the presence of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit, as we give you thanks for the life we have through Jesus. We pray all this in his precious and holy name. Amen. So I would invite you to take your bread, cracker, whatever you might have nearby. And uh, let's, in memory of Jesus Christ, let's partake together. Now I would invite you to take your cup, whatever juice you might have or liquid you might have, and uh, as we partake together, let's remember Jesus Christ. O our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For now is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thanks so much for connecting with us today here at Walton Church Live. Really a joy to do life together. Have any questions about baptism or about who we are, about what we believe, uh, again, you can contact us. You can send us an email at waltonccfuse.net or give us a phone call at 859-485-4591. Have a great week and join us again next week as we enter into new space, Advent 2023. Hope to see you then. Hope to see you soon. Bye.